Oh, please tell me you stopped by to talk penny stocks. I am so bored. <laughs> you did. Fantastic. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot. And this is the weekend of June 30th. We are crossing over into July 1st. And did you know that we are launching our digital dollar tomorrow, July 1st of this year? Yes, we are. It's called the Fed Now, also nicknamed the Fed Coin. Banks are getting it first. They're going to be using it through all the businesses. I don't know when retailers, consumers are going to get it, but it's just around the corner. Fed now is what they're calling it. It's probably time to do some research. And since it is a digital dollar, that's crypto, I think there could be a big influx in the crypto market. I'm not quite sure how or when, but I would keep my eye on it. Well, we don't talk crypto on this show. We talk OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for stocks under five bucks that have potential to make us money. Now these stocks are on every market, thank God. And there is a little bit of a difference between penny stocks on the major exchange and penny stocks on the OTC. Not the price, they're the same, anything under five bucks. The difference, well, you trade up on the major exchanges, you don't have any transaction fees. That's a nice difference. There's a lot more volume on the major exchanges. I like that too. And most importantly, there's a lot more money upon the major exchange. People who have money, investing money, they're doing it on the major exchange, not the OTC. So yeah, I do like trading these penny stocks on the major exchanges. Now when I go looking for a hot penny stock, I don't go rummaging through the news and the filings. There's a lot of that out there and really, I don't know what's going to be hot. What I do understand are the charts. So I go looking for charts that have heat first. I'm looking for volume coming in, a breakout setup, maybe a surge that's been running, some huge multiple bounces. When I find a chart that has heat, then I go through the press releases and the filings, looking for that catalyst, either keep the chart running or get it going. And these are the sort of stocks we talk about. Let's take a look at that first ticker then. This is Nano Dimension, ticker NNDM. Now, I first became aware of this company late Thursday afternoon, just before my live streaming event. I do one every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. We're there for an hour, talking live to other investors about tickers they're interested in. I'm giving you tickers I'm interested in all week, so this gives you a chance to tell me what you're looking at. Well, I believe it was Don Clady, I think I remember that right, wanted to look at Nano Dimension, ticker NNDM. So it was the first ticker we looked at, and it is very interesting. I definitely want to share this with you. But what was even more interesting was through the rest of the show, which lasts about an hour, we had about six or seven more comments about this ticker. That normally doesn't happen. When you get a lot of people talking about one stock, now I'm not saying I have a whole big audience, I don't. But still, out of the people I had, a lot of them wanted to talk about this stock. Well, that's called buzz. You don't ignore buzz. So Nano Dimension, she finished the day today at $2.89 and she was just under 5% gains. Now she is a penny stock on the NASDAQ, so we get to trade this for free. So what is this company about? They're into 3D printing of electronic parts, including circuit boards. Nano Dimension is a 3D printing technology company based in Israel. The company is engaged in researching, developing, and manufacturing 3D printers, as well as the functional nanomaterial inks for printing electronics, in particularly circuit boards. The company's primary ink products are conductive silver nanoparticle inks, as well as an insulating nanopolymer ink. Both of these materials have applications way beyond the printing of circuit boards. Now the company has a jet printer system, a desktop version that you can put in your home and your office and print your own circuit boards. That's what we all want to do, right? And they've got their printer, the Dragonfly, going through advanced stages. I think we are up to Dragonfly 4 right now. And weren't those electronic pieces they were printing interesting? Wow, where we are going. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Nice bounce up three times, 300%, from 2.1 million up to 7.5 million. She's getting a lot of attention right now. Share structure for the company. Outstanding share count, 258 million. I was curious about this, so I ran around Google doing a search, came up with a lot of numbers, none of them agreed. All of them were over 200 million though. 
So we know our float's probably between 200 million and 258 million. Financials for the company are good, real good. Look at the growth spurt she's had here. From 2020 to 2021, 3.3 million. We got three zeros we gotta add to any of these numbers. Jump into 10.5 million. That is 300% gains, three times. Then in 2021 going to 2022, we went from 10 million to 43 million. That's 400% gains. Now do it from top to bottom. 3 million to 43 million is 1,300% gains in revenue in two years. So yeah, she's doing quite well. Looking at her balance sheet, she's got 685 million in the bank, cash. That is half of all of her assets, $1.2 billion. And she's only got a measly, <laughs> a measly $53 million in liabilities. Looking at her uh, disclosures here, oh yes, we've got a investment form. These 13 Ds, 13 Gs, these are when people buy enough shares that they actually become owners in the company. And they can have more than one inside these. Now, I wanna show you, I don't know how many are in this, but these are real quick and easy to read, and this is good news. People want to get into the company. This is Merchantsons. They have just bought 7.5 million shares. That gives them a total of 15 million, and they now own 6% of the company. Over here, we have Noma's Bay. They got 4.5 million shares. They are, that's their first time buying in, and they've got 1.8% of the company. Down here, we have BPY Limited. They've gotten 3 million shares. First time buyers just getting into the company own 1.2%. Look at all of these new investors. EOM Management, they just got 7.5 million shares, first time buyers, 3% of the company. James Keyes, he's got 7.5 million, first time buyer, 3%. Look at all of these investors. Am I boring you? Not if you want to invest in this company. Jason, Jason got 7.5 million, first time investor, 3% of the company. Chaja. Chaja also got 7.5 million shares. First time investor, 3% of the company. Are you keeping addition here? What's going on? Another 75 million shares. They've been here before. They own now 15 million shares and have about 6% of the company. Wow, I think that was seven new investors. Now, I don't know how many shares that was. That was millions upon millions. But I did add up the percentage. They have just had 27% of the company bought up in this one filing. This came out yesterday. So something's going on. People want to get in. First time investors and people already in are building up their holdings. So things are looking good. Let's take a look at that news now. We got a ton of news over here. Thank God we don't have to go through all of it. All of this news is old. That's from 2016 and 2015. And then all of this news is current. And believe it or not, all that news right there only goes back to April 10th. Now we're not even gonna read everything I got headlined here. Take notice, a lot of these sentences I've only highlighted the very center well, every one of those pieces of news are all about the same thing. So there's no reason to go into all of them. But you can see, it's been going on for a long time. Matter of fact, the very first one down here and the very first one at the top are basically the same. Check this out. This came out April 13th. Stratasys Board of Directors unanimously rejects the Nano Dimension revised unsolicited proposal of $20.05 per share. Now, I'll explain more about what this is in a minute. But that headline right there is virtually the headline we have now in June. July, Stratasys Board of Directors unanimously rejects Nano Dimension's revised partial tender offer. They keep changing it, trying to make it better. So I'm gonna jump into just one of these news presses. I do believe this one came out May 30th. They were gonna do a conference call and they've got a lot of information here. Now let me go through the information and then we'll discuss this. The company is tendering a special tender offer to increase its ownership in Stratasys, ticker SSYS on the NASDAQ, because of the merits 
of Stratasys' proposed deal with Desktop Metal. On May 25, 2023, the company commenced a special tender offer to purchase between 38 and 40% of the outstanding shares of the company for $18. That would give them a total of 53 to 55% considering they already own just a little over 14%. Now here's the deal. A tendered offer is buying your shares directly from the investor, not having to go through the open market. The price right now may be $17, and they're going to offer you $18 to $22. That's a nice profit. But Stratasys is saying over and over, it's not a fair deal. Don't do it. Don't do it, please. Because what's going to happen? If this company, Nano, gets all that they want, they're going to have more than half of Stratus. Well, that means that Stratasys is their company. They're in control. That's a hostile takeover. A strategist doesn't want it to happen. So for some reason, Nano Dimension is very interested in this company since they are making this deal with Desktop Metal. So we need to look into that further. Nano Dimensions also released an investor presentation further detailing the benefits of the special tender offer to Stratasys shareholders and strategic rationale for the tender offer. They've actually got out a digital brochure for those investors and that company trying to sell them on the idea of sell your shares for this high price. It is worth it. Now jumping back to that news. They have had a couple of sales here because you got to remember they're here to sell that 3D printer. We've got one sale here. Now, I don't see a whole lot of other sales mentioned, but come on, you know they're selling them. You saw the revenues increasing leaps and bounds. So even though the news isn't here, it's happening. And of course, if you really want to get down to the nitty gritty of what's going on, jump into the most recent financial. They'll have all the history of everything they've done since this company started. All right, let's go take a look at that chart. We got a surge that has gone parabolic. It is going to the moon right now. This is Nano Dimension, ticker NNDM, and we're going to be doing our charting on TD Ameritrade's free trading platform, Think or Swim. You get this when you sign up with TD Ameritrade, and that's free too. So looking at a six-month, four-hour view here. We have a low bubble in December of $2 and a high bubble in March of $3.22. She has fallen since that high all the way down to a low here of $2.17 and now she is ripping. Now, believe it or not, she is just now actually starting to break out. I mean, she had a nice breakout over the 200. So what is it I'm talking about? Well, if we grab our regression channel and you can poke anywhere on the day that you're starting from and just drag it on across and look it's pretty much dead even she has been riding in this channel across the board breaking out at the top breaking out at the bottom but she's just pretty much been going sideways she was all the way underneath this she came up broke through the 200 here that put her through the halfway mark and now she's breaking out of the channel so it's like we got a double breakout going on here and look at our oscillators for goodness sake every single one of them is pushing to the moon with the rocket still burning and i do believe we have a lot of volume look at the volume growing 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 getting stronger everything is picture perfect here all of our smas are pushing up and looking sweet 20 day one hour view as I said, she was going sideways. She took this big drop and she bounced off that low bubble hard. Well, we've got five days of running here. She beelined it across this bottom of the channel and across the 200. And once she got firm on that 200, you can see she bounced on it a couple times. That was it. She jumped hard, went sideways to the next morning, took a nap, jumped again. Now she's going sideways. What do you think? Maybe another bounce tomorrow? It's possible. This is why you want to put it on your watch list. Checking out that five day, five minute. Whoa. So she swooped right around, crossed that 200 here, got up on top of her 50, and that's what she's paying heed to, is that 50 day SMA. The 50 is leveled out right now. It could be waiting for the 200. She crossed here, got pretty close there. She's been far away. She may want to bounce off of it. You know, a little ricochet here. Oscillators say we are on a downtrend right now. I can see all of our SMAs are slightly pushing down, but I'm thinking she's going to bounce off that 200. She just had a lot of investors come in. 
Some were adding to their holdings. Some first time. Why right now? What do they know that we don't know? They're insiders. They get to know what we don't know. We're just following their lead. NNDM. She does look exciting to me. Does she to you? Now, I'm liking this stock. This stock has a lot of ingredients that I look for for stocks that I'm going to be playing or even investing in. I think this is going to be a great play stock, but I also think it's great for a long hold. Right now, the chart isn't super exciting because they're not getting a lot of volume. I mean, this is one of those companies that is literally under the radar. Nobody's paying attention to it, and they should. They've come up with a product, a textile, that is unlike anything else in the world right now, as far as I've been able to find. They have been approved by the EPA. They have just been issued a patent for it, and this is going to be hot. This is a fabric that has all sorts of antibacterial, antimicrobial, antiviral, anti-UV radiation, all sorts of things built into one fabric. Things you can wear and things you can have around your house or in hospitals that kill germs on contact within 10 minutes. It is exciting. So this is IFABF, IFABRIC Core, ticker IFABF. She finished the day almost at $1.10 and about 15.5% gains. First thing she's got going for her, she is on the OTC, the best tier, the QX. This might as well be on the major exchange. I mean, they do everything that they do on the major exchange. We have audited financials. They give us filings for every single thing they do. You know everything about a company on the QX. You know the QX is where Heineken is at, Adidas, uh, L'Oreal, EasyJet, yeah, they're all on the OTC market. Now, they're all there for one reason. They're foreign companies. They don't have offices in America, like Budweiser. Once they left America and went over to Europe, they had to move off of the major exchanges and come down to the OTC. But if you're going to be on the OTC, you want to be in the best neighborhood possible. Pink's they're the ghetto. <laughs> the QX is the luxury area. These are the condos. This is real ritzy, ritzy zone. So if you're going to be trading stocks on the OTC and you want to feel confident, QX is where you want to be. And look at all the green ticks they've got down here. Everything you could want. Verified profile and a transfer agent. Very important. Lots of information being verified behind the scenes. Now, of course, on the QX, you expect that. But you would like to see these on the pinks where you don't get any information validated or verified. We don't get audited financials. No, we get disclosures. They're just telling us how much money they've made and how much people are getting paid and that's it. We would have to do all the accounting. We can't even get fundamentals. How do you measure a company that has no fundamentals? This company is totally measurable. They've got independent directors. You don't need these unless you're uplisted. Now, I'm sure they've been coming up through the ranks. I haven't checked, but I'm sure they've gotten to the QX coming up from lower tiers. But chances are, with what they've got, they're going to want to go to the NASDAQ. This is a hot item that they've got. And you need independent directors if you're going to uplist. Well, I see them there, and you don't need them there unless you plan on uplisting. So, and we've got a bonus here, penny stock exempt. Now, I talk to you about this all the time, but if you ever want to see the definition, just click it. It'll bring you right to it. It's up there at the top of the page. They say there are one of three ways you get to be penny stock exempt, which is a good thing. It means we're not a risky startup company. We've proven ourselves to be reliable, responsible. And how do they do that? By generating money, one way or another. First one, you're aware of this one. The price has to be over five bucks. Well, I tell you every day, we're looking for penny stocks. That is, any stock under five bucks. So as soon as they go over five bucks, they're not a penny stock. Well, this one's only at a buck ten, so it ain't that one. The second way you can become penny stock exempt is to have an average revenue of six million dollars over the last three years. That's pretty good. You've got to be generating money, two million dollars a year. That means you're working hard. Hard workers are responsible. And the last way you can do it, the issuer has to have net tangible assets in excess of $2 million if the issuer has been in continuous operations for at least three years. And if they've been in business for less than three years, they have to have $5 million in tangible assets. So you better have tangible. 
You, you know, you got to have it in the bank, real property, a building, something. So you've got to show that you're not messing around. You're accumulating value as you're here. So this company is penny stock exempt. So it doesn't matter their price. It doesn't matter what market they're on. They are not a penny stock. That is as safe as you're going to get. So let's look a little more at what this company does. We get a real small description right here. Let's go to a bigger one. We get this one for their most recent press release. The company, they are headquartered in Ontario, Canada. They've got two divisions. They produce a variety of products and services through intelligent fabric technologies and coconut grove pads. Intelligent Fabric Technologies is focused on the development and sale of high performance sports apparel, medical protective apparel, consumer protective apparel, three huge markets, all with proprietary treatments that provide intelligent properties to the fabrics, foams, and plastics, as well as other surfaces, thereby improving the safety and the well being of the users. Some of these intelligent properties include antiviral and antibacterial characteristics water repellents, and UV protection, just to mention a few. They've also got that Coconut Grove, which is a storefront. This is where they sell their swimwear and their ladies' apparel. Now, we're going to get more information about what this fabric is all about as we look at the news. Right now, let's take a look at that relative volume for the company. Now, I told you she is under the radar right now. Her volume has been light. Her average has been 1.3 thousand shares a day. That is the definition of under the radar. Today, she did almost 100% increase, which is something to brag about, but it's still a real small number, 2.4 thousand shares. Definitely under the radar, definitely a good time to be considering this stock. Share structure for iFabric. Now, I did not go out and look up the float on this, but whatever it is, it isn't going to be bad, and it could be really good. Outstanding share count is only 30 million. So even if we don't know what the float is, we do know it's under 30 million, which isn't bad. But they tell us back in September of last year, it was at 9.9 .9 million. Ooh, we'd love that. Anything under 10 million is a legitimate low float. And I think this stock is just getting ready to run. And I would like to run with the low float. The less weight you're carrying, the higher you can fly. <laughs> Financials for iFabric. They're good. They have been growing from 7.8 million to 8.6 to 15 to 14.3. All right, they took a little bit of a dip from 2021 to 2022, but they're making steady profits. They're looking good. Quarterly, well, that's better, right? They were doing four, 4.6, 3.6, and then bounced, we're almost up to 5 million. They're actually picking up momentum right now, as I would expect they would. Things are looking good financially, they are growing. Looking at their disclosures, we got none. We've got no SEC filings and all of their financials are on time. So let's jump on into that news. We are looking at news going back here to October of last year. iFabric Core announces launch of Versus All apparel brand and new orders. Quick peek into here. Versus All is a new brand of clothing that they're selling. It is ladies wear, seems to include swimwear as well and they're telling us the swimwear is hot they have confirmed orders by major retailers currently total of 3.2 million dollars it's canadian dollars but that's still a lot of money with initial delivery scheduled to commence during the second quarter of 2023 that's right now so business right now is getting going and repeat orders will be coming in considering it's summer now right so i think that is good news and it shows us that they are definitely getting momentum going jumping back to that news ifabric court announces epa registration of new technology bioactive am they tell us here that the company has received a United States Environmental Agency registration for its innovative new multifunctional technology, Bioactive AM, which combines antimicrobial, antiviral, deodorant, and UV protection into a single formulation. Deodorant, boy, sports apparel is going to love that. Bioactive AM represents the culmination of lengthy period of development and testing to create a novel, four-in-one formulation that marries antibacterial, 
antiviral efficacy with deodorization and UV protection in a single textile finishing application. That's one of their hot products. And I think it is going to be hot. Do you know anyone else who's got anything like this? And then they've got iFabric Core announces breakthrough and EPA public health claims approval process with initial registration of Protex 2 for use in non-apparel products. And I think this is just as big a market. They tell us here that uh, the company has received a United States Environmental Agency registration for Protex 2 as continually self-sanitizing textile. This registration allows textiles treated with Protex 2 technology to make public health claims. They're allowed to say, our product does this for use in non-apparel products, which includes curtains, carpeting, and home furnishing fabrics, amongst others. Protex 2 treated textiles kills 99.99% of bacteria in 10 minutes with non-stop disinfection for 24 hours kills pathogenic bacteria, kills 99.99% of bacterial nonstop for 24 hours, continuously disinfects. Do you think the hospitals would like this? You think all their curtains and all their rooms and all their hallways would be covered? They, they said they have other things too. Carpet. I mean, this could be everywhere. Everywhere. I think this is huge, folks. And the very last piece of news we got here is the issuance of the new United States utility patent for antiviral applications on textiles. This is how they're going to protect it. Patents mean nobody else can do what they're doing. And I don't know how many patents they've got. You're going to have to do some more research here. But I like the company's technology. I like what they're doing. They're hitting every single market. Medical, sports, consumer. You can put it on clothing we wear, clothing or fabrics we use in our homes probably get into cars here real soon. Whoa, think of the applications and how much money they can make even licensing off this technology. Other companies just spray their products with Protex 2 or that Bio X, whatever that was. And they just get paid for putting their, their products on other people's products. Whew. Can you tell I'm getting excited about this? I am. All right. Like I said, the chart isn't super exciting, but it is doing the right thing. It's just doing it lightly. It's like a teenager coming into manhood, and that excites me as well. That is going to be a strong athlete. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Whoa, bouncing on back to Think or Swim. We are taking a look at ticker IFABF. This is iFabric Core. And though that looks like a 20-day, one-hour chart, that is a four-hour, six-month chart. And it's sweet. It is, it's lightly traded, but it's doing the right things. Our SMAs were all downtrend here, and they have now turned up. Everything is on an uptrend. Bouncing off of that low bubble in mid-December of 43 cents, she crossed over that 50-day SMA and has pushed up to a high in May of $1.10. Right now, we're at $1.95. She is right up underneath that high. Break that high, she's got room to run. All the room she wants. Our oscillators, they're strong. Our PPO is pushing up. MACD is having a crossover right now. RSI is climbing and is up at 62. Everything is looking good. What we need is volume. 20 day, one hour view. Lightly traded. All right, we've got our 50 day SMA here. You can see it's an uptrend. Everything is above the 50 day. We can't complain about that. She has pretty much been going sideways all of this time, and right now, she's doing a small breakout. She's gotten on top of the 20, here comes the nine. She pushed up to that high of $1.95, and she is there right now. Osculators all look good. PPO is pushing up, MACD is pushing up, RSI is pushed up to 64 now. Five day, five minute, very light. We're not getting a lot of trading. Don't let that scare you. Go do some more due diligence on this company. Go to their website and you will see a very long list of products they're working with. They have skin creams and all sorts of stuff using their technology. It is way more than fabrics. Because we didn't do a deep dive, you just don't know. So do your own deep dives, folks. We've got an uphill climb here. 
going from 95 cents, there's one step, two steps, three steps. Looks like she's gaining momentum to me. And both of the oscillators we have now, our MACD and our PPO look outstanding. Look at that, tic-tac-toe. Everything looks like it's ready to grow. IFAB F, folks, come on, it definitely belongs on your watch list. Do some more due diligence. I think you'll get excited when you see everything they've got too. I'm feeling pretty good about this video. You've already got two very hot penny stocks. Well, I've got a third one for you here. This is ticker GRNL, Greenlight Ventures, and I like everything about this stock. Let's start with the chart. The chart was on fire. From November to April, it was a steady uptrend. No bouncing, just run, 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 run. From six cents to 95 cents. Whoa, you're talking 1,500% gain, steady. And then in April, it just fell away. She broke the 200, she broke her 50, she was looking sad. But now she's cupped back around, she's got this big old green bar that has just broke the 50 day SMA and she's looking good. Particularly because of the catalyst. She's made some changes, she's got some hot news. Things are looking good right now. GR, NL, she finished the day at about 80 cents and she had over 14% gains today. She's on the pink tier, she's current, and she's got those green ticks giving us that validated information we want to have. So things are looking good in that regard. Problem is they say she's a shell risk. This isn't good. This means she's in business, but she's not making any money. Well, what kind of business is that? Get out of it, go do something else that makes you money. Well, that's exactly what they've done. This news press came out February 23rd. Greenlight Ventures completes first acquisition. This is the first of a few, as you're gonna see. The company purchases Artinian. This is the parent company of Game Time Watches and Game Time Brands. Are you familiar with them? They've been around a long time. I'll bet you probably know somebody who owns one of their watches. Game Time is the leader in licensed sports watches, having active ongoing license agreements with the NFL, MLB, NHL, NASCAR, WWE, and more, along with several iconic athletes and brands. So you've got a company here who's not reporting any revenues, getting a company that is in business, has contracts with all these major league sporting teams, celebrities. You think they're gonna be making some money now? You bet. How much? Well, we get a little bit of insight down here. Game Time provides us with a profitable seven-figure revenue base to grow from, as well as access to virtually every top professional league, team, and player we may want to partner with. With the nonstop media attention surrounding sports today, athletes and former athletes have become the biggest celebrities and the most popular people on the planet. Well, I may debate that, but I get their drift. The fact of the matter is, they have a pool that will never dry up. You're always gonna get new celebrities coming out of sports, so they're gonna be able to make more and more products. And that's what they do. They've got contracts with all of those teams right there. They have contracts with individual celebrities, old and new. You got Jackie Robinson and Bruce Lee and they sell all these various types of watches at all different prices, but they've got other products as well. So if you're looking for a gift for somebody who's into sports, you may wanna come on over here, one size fits all. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Not bad, she's jumped over 100%, uh, maybe 150%, going from 3.7 thousand shares to 8.2 thousand shares. Definitely under the radar, but getting more attention. Share structure for Greenlight. Outstanding share count, they tell us is 42 million. They say, oh my God, they say that the insiders own 40 and a half million of those shares. If that be the case, that means they firmly believe in this company and they wanna make money off of all their hard work. Well, look what's left for us you're looking at about 1.5 million shares in the float. 1.5 million? Folks, I'm excited. Honestly, I was unaware of this. You'd think I was on top of all the information before I give it to you, but some of it I just wait to see and just let you see what I think. That's incredible. 1.5 million in a stock that is 
bought game time that has contracts with all the major league teams and is selling these products every year holy cow i'm excited i did not know that the float was that small i get any more excited i'm going to start spitting here grnl's financials you know exactly what they are because they are a shell risk they're not making any money not annually not quarterly they got nothing coming in which makes this deal huge they're going to be making what did they say it was a seven digit revenue from their base well that's a million dollars they're jumping from no revenues to a million dollars to start that's pretty exciting disclosures for the company we got nothing here since 2019 so let's just jump on into that news now we've read the first piece of news back here in february that was their first acquisition game time then they made a deal here with brandstar but then they turned around and canceled that deal brandstar was going to push and advertise gamestop through their channels well in place of that they went and made another deal with this guy named dave vincent they tell us here that they signed an exclusive consulting agreement with simulated altitude pioneer dave vincent for vincent to lead grnl's entry into the altitude training market as well as other related businesses i have no idea what altitude training is is this climbing mountains i mean i'm being serious what is it vincent currently owns and operates sporting edge uk one of the leading manufacturers and providers of simulated altitude and environmental chambers in Europe. He intends to make game time a major player in the altitude training boom across the Americas. Vincent's plans to utilize his long-term relationship with one of the iconic names in professional sports conditioning to greatly accelerate GRNL's market penetration and potentially launch the first vertically integrated altitude fitness franchise in the world. So he's going to be promoting game time through all of his channels. The next piece of news comes in June. June 16th, Game Time Production completes three targeted acquisitions. They tell us here that the company has announced that they have acquired Altitude Wellness, Trident Water, and Altitude International, all of which were operating as wholly owned subsidiaries of Altitude International Holdings. The acquisitions have been structured as no liability, debt-free transactions, which is fantastic. GRNL is working with top industry leaders in all three market sectors to either restructure or sell the newly acquired assets in exchange for ongoing royalty payments from the new partners. Buy them, fix them, sell them. It's like flipping properties. GRNL has already entered into a multi-tiered royalty agreement with Blue Sky Strategy LLC, who now owns and operates the former Trident Water entity. GRNL has also signed an agreement to spin off the Altitude Wellness acquisition in exchange for guaranteed royalty payments. Now, spinoffs normally mean they're going on to the market and we normally get dividend shares, but I'm not too sure how this one's working out. They make it sound like it's being spun off to another company and they're going to get all the benefits. We're going to have to keep an eye on that. But they've got all sorts of things going on, lots of acquisitions, lots of royalties starting to come in. And that last piece of news we have, I'm on the wrong page, there it is. Game Time Production signs multi-year corporate partnership agreement with the New York Jets. Come on, folks, this is hot news. It just doesn't get any better. They have got contracts with how many sports teams? Looks like all of them. Hundred, at least a hundred of them. And how many players on any team? Lots. So they've got lots and lots of potential products that they can make for any of these leagues, teams, or celebrities. I think they've got a lot going on. They're going from zero to a million dollar revenue to start. That changes the entire game. Shouldn't that change the charts? I think it will. Let's go take a look at it. You know what I like better than an atypical breakout chart, which is one of my favorites? A sweet recovery. And that's what we got here with Greenlight Ventures. This is ticker GRNL, six month, four hour view. And what a chart for a long chart. We've got a low bubble in this corner of six cents back in November and a high here of 99 cents in April. Look at that, month after month after month of running, floating on the nine-day SMA, just softly bouncing off of the 20. 
Here we got a couple of foundation spikes going deep into the ground so she don't dip over and she just kept climbing. Now once she hit this high in April, she did fall back. Now this is her standard, but here's another one of those foundation spikes all the way down to 24 cents and then bounce back up. She has curved around and she is sitting on top of her 50 day SMA with some big bold bars up here now and she is just under 80 cents way up here. Now we've got a new SMA that just came into the picture, the 200 day SMA. And I always worry that the price is gonna gravitate to the new SMA, which it normally does. But we don't have to worry about that. Take a closer look, it's already done it. It came into the picture here and right there, she paid her homage, tag, like Wide World Wrestling, you know, made that tag and she's out of here. She's running across all of her SMAs and she's up there on top of her 50, looking strong. How strong? Oscillators are looking brilliant. Our PPO, Presenters Price Oscillator, and MACD are both pushing up right now. RSI is clear up at 65, and I see a pattern that I really appreciate. This is my PPO, Presenters Price Oscillator. Underneath it, I put there purposely, is the ADX. ADX is real simple. It's just trend continuation. It's not about which direction this is going. It's just, is it still a straight line? Whatever direction the trend is going and that line starts going, you don't want the line to change. Right now, I got an uptrend. My line is falling. I don't want it to go anywhere else but fall. Just keep falling and it keeps rising. Well, it's easy to see this climb and that fall. And you get this V. Well, when you see a V on the board, guaranteed your price is climbing and climbing nice. So those oscillators look sweet. We got a crossover our signal line here on our MACD with lots of green bars accumulating and that RSI is clear up there at 65. So she is looking really sweet. 20 day, one hour view. Oh, what a brilliant chart. Low bubble in that corner, 60 cents. High bubble over here of 80 cents. It is a slow, gradual climb crossing each one of the SMAs. Once she got over the 50 and the 200 day haul, she bounced. Look at how big these bars are getting. And she put herself, put herself, that's when she stopped climbing and she rested right up there on top of the 200 day SMA. She's positioning herself. Oscillators are looking wonderful. PPO and MACD are getting ready to launch right now. And look at the RSI doing the same thing. Just a hair under the overbought right now. Things are looking sweet. Five day, five minute. Not a lot to look at, but it's all perfect. It's all brilliant. We have a low bubble in this corner of uh, 67 cents. Still got 80 over here on top of our nine floating bar after bar after bar getting bigger. Now it's picking up momentum and all of our oscillators are on fire on the five minute. This looks like it's ready to run the tomorrow. I would put this on my watch list, GRNL for tomorrow, but I would put this on my buy list because this looks like it's gonna be doing well. Game time is gonna put them in the batter's box immediately with a million dollars revenue. We need to see that next financial because this news came out in February. Not the one that just came out, but the next one should show us revenues. And you'll want to be in this with that itty bitty tiny float of 1.5 million when that next financial comes out. Whew. Is it getting warm in here to you? Hmm. If I had to grade myself in the stocks I presented you today, I'd give myself a 9 out of 10. Yeah, I would. These are hot stocks with hot catalysts and hot charts. NNDM, they've got a new technology, 3D printing of complete circuit boards and electronic component parts. This is gonna revolutionize the industry. IF, ABF, a fabric that fights germs 24 hours a day, plus a lot of other things. Don't you think every hospital in the country would want that? Every hospital in the world? This is hot to me. And then you've got game time. They're jumping from zero revenues to a start of a million. They've got a business that's been there for quite a while with contracts with all the major league teams and all the different various sports. Hot, hot, hot. But of course, do your own due diligence. I didn't cover everything. And I'm sure the more you learn, the more you're gonna get excited about this. Remember, the more you know, the more you're gonna grow. See ya.